Well, good morning, everyone. I am super excited to be doing the Ultimate Music interview live today. I'm Glory St. Germain from Ultimate Music Theory, and my very special guest and my dear friend, Carol Nates, is with us today. Good morning, Carol. Hello, how are you? <laughs> so, Carol, um, are you still in Florida? I am indeed, and right now I'm very happy that I'm in Florida. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. while Carol's like strolling the beach, I'm out in the yard with my parka because I'm yeah. up in central Canada. But yeah. the beauty of it is that we can connect, um, you know, via the internet and and have this wonderful conversation today. So um, Carol Mates is from uh, Interactive a Piano Method. And if you want to learn more about teaching your students and how to improvise and use lead sheets and what's a lead sheet anyway. So thank God we've got Carol with us today to kind of go into a little bit more detail. And I think Carol's going to reveal a few secrets from her pro piano skills section. And she also said she has a little gift for us today. So uh, go ahead and just say hi, because you're in for some treats today. So Carol, um, in addition to all of your amazing accomplishments, of course, you've traveled the world uh, in places that I aspire to go. And of course, you've done these the US and Canada and Australia and England and New Zealand. So maybe before we get into your, you know, famous and fun, and actually not only are you famous and fun, but you actually <laughs> have a famous and fun in addition to your interactive piano method. So maybe share a little bit about how you got started and became so famous and fun. Oh, well, being fun is the easy part. The other thing <laughs> I don't know, but um, you know, it was really, an interesting thing for me is my mom's a great pianist and she was actually my first teacher. I started when I was like four. Yeah. And my favorite thing to do was like play underneath the piano. She got me like a little <laughs> xylophone and she'd be playing Chopin and Beethoven sonatas. Mm -hmm. And I would just lay underneath the piano with my oh, feet God. up and just <laughs> listen. And that, that was really my start. And my mother, she's 81. She still plays hours every day, Rachmanina, everything. And she's great. And the other day I went over there and I said, you know what? I'm going back to my roots. And I got underneath the piano and laid there and listened to her play. Yeah, um, so that was, that was kind of, you know, the thing. But it's interesting because how I got into really doing what I'm doing now yeah. is because as a student myself, I wanted to play pop music. I wanted to play the Beatles. I hated, in particular, Kabalevsky. My, yeah. my little old lady piano teacher was, you know, trying to have me do these things. And I wanted to branch things out a little bit more. And so I started to teach myself how to play pop. And then that kind of evolved into the way that I taught piano once I started doing that. Well, I think it's interesting and fun that you said you're laying underneath the piano uh, <laughs> because I have a couple of students that do that. So now I'll just oh. say, oh, you're so gifted and talented. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> Perfect place to start. Very good. So when, when you started your your composing, like, did you start composing when you were young? And then how did it evolve? Like, what is your, and I think that's such a great question because often students just don't know, like, is there a process? Like, how does that all work when you want to, like, I want to write my own song. So how am I going to start? It's magic. <laughs> how does the internet work? It's magic. Yeah, um, exactly. I think I did start um, composing when I was young. I was kind of doing songwriting, like when I was 12. I played the guitar since I was nine years old, and I still play today. Yeah. Um, I've got my, I mean, like, I rock out. <laughs> I've got hey. my. Uh, I know you do rock band too, right? You love I'm that. I'm actually a really good rock band drummer. I oh, oh, drummer has to be up because I know how to play guitar and it's just right. different. So, um, but I did, I wrote songs on my guitar and kind of got into writing lyrics, but it was always in there. And I think that the reason I got into composition was for my students. So I started writing pieces and ultimately I ended up taking all these pieces and submitting them. This was many years ago. I know you guys probably know some of my FJH publications. Right. They're from yep. Otterdale as well as I am. Yeah. So I got, uh, my first entree to publishing, you know, my pieces that were written especially for my students right. through FJH. Right. And then just so you all feel better, they all got rejected. Yeah. <laughs> and we know the, that feeling. Yeah. And this is, this is the important thing is, right. I, I don't take no for an answer. I mean, yeah. it was kind of like, all right. So I contacted them and said, you know, can I speak with the editor and find out what I didn't do right? And right. thank goodness she's become a very good friend of mine since. Yeah. 
And she um, kind of mentored me into what I should be doing. So I took a few pieces, rewrote them, resubmitted them, and got published. So it's just yeah. that having that tenacity is, is a good thing. My yeah. composition process, I mean, I'm kind of kidding, and I'm kind of not kidding when I say magic, because I really <laughs> don't know where it comes from. I kind of will sit down, and I think one of the things one of the things that you can think about and that your students can think about as well is if you stare at a blank page, forget it. It's just going to be frustration. But if you think about parameters, what am I going to write? What's the, the time signature? What's the key signature? What style do I want to write a rag? Do I want, you know, a tarantella? Anything that you can do that creates a set of parameters, mm -hmm. for me at least, that tends to spark the creativity. So I work within that framework and I'm able to come up with ideas just like that. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think you're right. Sometimes it might be too. And, and I often discuss that with my students when they're learning a piece, they say, you know, what do you think the composer was feeling or, or thinking about when they wrote this? Because if you just have a title, you know, yeah. my sister Susie, you know, yeah. I think he was thinking about his sister, but was it a happy song? Was he mad at her? You know, right, what were right. those? So it's kind of is a start. And what's interesting is that you are a composer. So you're right. It comes magically and you write and you create. And I think some of the challenges that some teachers face, myself included, is that, yes, maybe we do a little bit of noodling around, but right. how can we actually teach composing so that our students will actually learn effectively? But maybe we should start with lead sheets because there's a difference between composing right. and improvising. So can you talk a little bit about, oh, what's a lead sheet? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, well, you know, you'd mentioned uh, I've got the pro piano skill section in the yeah. interactive method. And the reason that I created this is because, again, that's how I've taught since I was 18 years old. That's how I've been teaching students. Um, and it's a way to get them away from just the printed score. And a lead sheet, it's a term that's often misused, but what really a lead sheet is, it's uh, one staff, usually the treble staff with the melody on it. Yes. Sometimes lyrics, sometimes not. But above the staff is a series of chord symbols. So right. if you have a knowledge, if a student has the knowledge of their majors, their minors, how to just play these triads in, in both hands and in different inversions, basically what they'll do is look at the lead sheet, play right. a chord, and then you're playing the melody over the top of it. Now, that is the most basic way to approach right. it. In the pro piano skills, well, I'll go over yeah. incremental steps. That's the most important thing. Don't just mm -hmm. say here, play the melody, play the chords. So right. you can go through incremental steps of playing melody separately, playing the chords, putting them together. Then, oh, it's a slow song. Maybe we'll add paddle and do the chords broken yeah. in the left hand. Right. So that opens things up and, you know, leads to lead sheet playing. And, you know, one of the things, and of course, you know, you and I are friends, and one of the things that I'm so passionate about in Ultimate Music Theory is providing the kids with the knowledge yes. in music theory so you can take your program and just sit down and open the palette of colors and explore yes. playing them broken. Because oftentimes, too, you know, uh, piano students will come in with lead sheets from band and say, oh, yeah. my band teacher said I have to learn this. And they're like, you know, they don't know, like, why is there a, an uppercase G with a lowercase M with a slash with the, yeah. you know, B underneath it. And so learning music theory that language is essential so Absolutely. that you can explore and it's not just about composing and noodling around but actually understanding right. what you're playing and Absolutely. it's so much fun to just grab yeah. a lead sheet. I think you just feel like oh I can do things different and and um yeah. it, it's just a whole new awakening and yeah. so when you're um doing this, exploring this and sharing it with teachers. Uh, one of the things I know that um, Carol has for us is is a little uh, gift today. So if you want to go ahead, I guess I should just acknowledge some of our comments here. I'm going to scroll down. Uh, 
Uh, oh, Karen um, Hedges says, hi, Carolyn Glory. So Karen is from Nashville, Tennessee. Well, actually, she's from, from Mount Juliet. I'll give a shout out to uh, Shiloh Music. And uh, I did a workshop for uh, Karen out there. So it's great to have uh, have her on the call. And Sarah Campbell, of course, our dear friend is out here too. So uh, this will be good for me too, says Karen. So yes, absolutely, Karen. You need to uh, explore all of Carol's uh, pro skills because they're amazing. And I did want to share that coming up shortly she's going to be uh, doing a little gift with us um, so if you type the word skills um you know you will get the link to the little gift that she has uh, coming out our way so tell us a little bit about how exactly your system works so now we've got the lead sheets and how does that work with the um uh, the pro piano skills so uh, the pro piano skills, like I said, it's a part of the interactive method, but you really could use this type of a system. And and maybe I'll throw like a little a little teaser out there. But this year, I'm actually going to now that I've wrapped up the main levels of interactive, I'm actually going to do some standalone volumes of pro piano skills and really go to town on these things because the feedback's been great. People want to be able to teach this. So how it works is that everything you know it happens to be corresponding unit by unit to the interactive method but again you can use it in a different way mm -hmm. and what i do is it's i think it's really important to take students through things incrementally now yeah. glory knows i'm a music theory geek and i own that badge proudly <laughs> and i like to take the theory concepts that i've taught in interactive or that your student learns elsewhere and then once they get into the to the program they'll have improvisation with you, the teacher. Let's say you've never taught improvisation before. It doesn't matter because I've got everything systematically broken down by steps. Perfect. To Perfect. teach things to students by steps is really the key because it demystifies everything. Right. So what they do is like, for example, the improvisational section or the composition section, because there are all these different skills that are in there. Mm -hmm. um, do them in the class with the student. They can go home. They can be creative. They can come back and you know rehash their compositions with you. Right. What, is, what I'd like to do is give a framework within which they that they work. So, for example, if they're doing composition, mm -hmm. I will write maybe a one four five seven or some kind of like an indication in the left hand. Say they're going to compose a ragtime piece. So I give them the chord progression, but they have to fill in the notes. Then maybe they're going to do the melody. So I'll cue the rhythmic melody the rhythm part of the melody and then they'll choose the notes within that key so there's a lot of experimentation but it's not staring at a blank page as far as lead sheets go same thing they're walked through step by step with each with each thing and the other thing i wanted to mention that people think lead sheets and chord charts are the same thing and it's interesting to note the difference a right. lead sheet will have you, it's like if you're playing a gig, you're playing a Christmas party, say, yeah. and you've got the melody and you're going to incorporate that in your right hand and you're going to, you know, play a piece through a, a, a lead sheet. That's one thing, right. and that's actually harder. Yeah. You play with a chord chart, a chord chart has no melody. It's as if the student is learning how to become an accompanist. Right. And that is really where I start with students because all they need to do is be able to play the chord, maybe play an octave or a single note in the left hand, and then they can make their way through any piece they want to play. I did it with the Beatles. Yes. So my students, I used to teach Let It Be, and then they would play like yeah. a dun, 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 dun. And then it would just be an F second version, a C, a B flat, whatever it is, and they would go through, and they're like, oh, I'm playing the piano and not reading. So it's a kind of a freeing thing to get away from the printed page. So I go through that, how to play the chords, how to add a rhythm, how to add the pedal, and so forth. That is so fantastic, Carol. Like, thank you for doing that because I think if there's not someone that's, you know, giving us that the steps of how right. can we guide our students through, because where do you right. learn this? You know, we've all had music teachers, but not everyone teaches in the same way. And it's funny because you and I right. both share that passion for the Beatles. And in fact, <laughs> I think your cat named George Harrison and your dog's named Ringo, right? And I have another one named Paul John. So, yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 
Well, my my lead sheet experience was um, uh, with uh, yesterday. I think I've yeah. played that a million times. And funny, my mom would just kind of say, well, you can either help me wash the dishes. This was before <laughs> dishwashers were invented. It's aging me. But anyway, we didn't have a dishwasher. And so my mom would say, well, you can either, you know, wash the dishes or go play on the piano. And, you know. <laughs> Thank goodness that was an option. And to this day, I still don't do dishes. I'd rather play the piano. But I don't think that is, uh, yeah, I'm really not doing that. But I think it's so fun. And, you know, my husband, Ray St. Germain, is a professional entertainer and a singer. And he obviously, when he's performing, just as you said, hands everybody the chord charts. Because that, Carol, I love that you said that because it's brilliant, because it enables you to even use your voice because a singer will not sing every note right. the same way every time. You know, they, right. they have that freedom. And right. so just to start, you know, by playing a chord chart, just to understand how to read it and then right. taking the lead sheet and going, okay, well now let's just, let's us play the melody and do the improvising. It's, it's completely brilliant. I, I absolutely right. love it. Cool. Um, now, other than you sharing some skills, cause I do have a couple more questions. I do need to have a little reveal here, if that's okay, Carol. <laughs> so, Give me with a shot, Glory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting her on the spot, but I won't go too far. So okay. when I'm when I'm teaching Ultimate Music Theory Club classes, we have our little characters, which are, I don't know if you can see them or not, they're kind of hanging out with me today. Solentito. And so because Carol and I both love the Beatles, and I used to always do a little bit of an accent. So Sola has a little little bit of an accent and she loves having tea when she's doing her theory. <laughs> And then Tito has a bit of an accent, but he's from the South. So I know that Karen from Nashville will recognize Tito. And then, of course, we've got... Now, I know that I'm being silly, but you know what? Students love that. And they are really teaching tools. And I know that Carol is not only a super fun teacher, but she also can talk like Donald Duck. <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> you can. Now I won't put you on the spot to to talk like Donald Duck. There would be spit flying out at the computer monitor. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> exactly. Or or revealing any of your really cute jokes or your or your fun secret handshake right. with your students. But I just think that you know one of the things that's so important in teaching is to have fun you know yeah. to be free to be silly to ask students what are you listening to um you know on your phone like what's your oh, yeah. playlist you know i love music that's got a great beat i love to dance even if it's just me by myself but yeah. it, it pumps me up and i think yeah. that in order you know when you talk to st uh, teachers that have students who go oh my students don't want to practice or they're they're quitting well maybe doing you know the interactive method and getting them to read lead sheets and letting them yes play the conservatory pieces because we want to sure. build you know technical facility and in independence of hands and independence of fingers but we also want them to be aspiring lifetime musicians and exactly presenting your um, fabulous program and getting them excited about it. You know, I think that's just one thing that we can do to help these musicians, you know, be lifetime because obviously yeah. you're all the instrumentalists. And I want to have a, 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 a question for you because other than doing impersonations to be fun, <laughs> tell <laughs> us, it, you know, how can we get started in a fun way with the pro piano skills section of the interactive method. So how can our students, you know, get started with your program today? Well, it's it's very simple to, um, first of all, you'll start with the sample sheets if you don't have the interactive method. It starts in level right. three, goes into level four. And okay. what's really interesting is that I've geared this so that you don't have to know how to improvise. You don't have to be, a, you know, a great lead sheet player or anything. Right. The idea is I'm almost trying to teach the student and the teacher at the same time. So it'll be almost like a collaborative learning experience for those of you who haven't done it. Let me give you an example. Sure. Um, you'll see in the free in the free sample that you guys are going to get the little the little PDF packet. Right. Make sure I type the word skills in the chat box. So that you'll get it skills yep yeah and you'll see in there jazz improv 
So okay. I've actually, so what I'll do is I'll say to the students, we'll start with just three notes, C, E flat, F. That's just the first three note of like a C blues scale. Yep. So then they're, well, what do I do with those three notes? Okay, so now you know where you're, so then I'll break it down into rhythm patterns. So okay. then they'll, they'll do some exercises on swing feel, then they'll take C, E, F, and then they'll play it. So I'll give them, a, a, you know, the rhythm, you know, da, 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 da. And then the student can play that on one note or yep. they could go da, 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 da. And they can start feeling like these little riffs and these I little like riffs and they'll start grooving. Now, what are they going to improvise to? Right. So I've written out your part. So you don't have to worry about being really good at just playing <laughs> Thank you. whatever key. So I have the teacher part written out. Perfect. And then I also have MP3s the students can play along. I just loop the teacher part on the recording right. and like for, for several minutes. And I always tell students, you know, you don't have to start when I start, just hit play. They listen or they listen to, yeah. to you as you play. And then when they're comfortable, they jump in and they try a few of these little rhythm patterns. And then later uh, in the higher levels, the ones that correspond to level four, mm -hmm. those are the ones where I make it more uh, what they say lick oriented. A lick is the, the little fragment of a solo, like this little blues kind of thing that you've always heard, you know, ba, ba, da, do, ba, 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 whatever it is. So I'll say, okay, there's your lick. So now you're gonna learn how to play licks in different keys you know, using minor pentatonic or blue scale, whatever. And then they'll start to link up the various licks to actually form a solo so that they can kind of, you know, that's one of the things I think is really important. Kids who play guitar, and I've taught guitar for many years, and kids who play guitar get that immediate yes. sense of accomplishment. You know, here's yes. where you put your fingers for a G chord, here's how you strum it, and then they can pick up any piece of pop sheet music and play it. So what I'm, what I'm endeavoring to do is take the way that guitar students learn. I'm not throwing aside the traditional curriculum because the rest of the interactive method is all about reading and I'm huge on scales and chords, arpeggios and technique, but to use this as a supplement where they can become social musicians so they don't have yes. guitar student envy, you know, yes. because guitar students can just play, then they can play solos and show off. So I want to bring that more to today's piano students. It's a, wow. not only a way of it's keeping them engaged, but it's also mm -hmm. a way for them to become what I call social musicians. And I, I think that. that's super important. I was popular in school and it wasn't cause of my, you know, charm or anything like that. <laughs> I wasn't, the, I didn't have the nicest clothes and the whatever, yeah. but I was always on stage playing piano, accompanying all yeah. the singers who tried out in the talent show. So I yes. would just, Carol, just stay up here. Here's my sheet music. So right. I was always like, you know, the cool one that was, you know, the yes. musician that was on stage. And I felt bad for this other student who was a really good pianist, but nobody wanted to hear, you know, her playing Chopin. They all wanted to hear whatever rock and roll was, you know, or pop yes. songs were happening at the time. So I think that that gives students self-confidence. They can get up on stage and do that. So I think that's really what, my ultimate goal is with every student is yeah. for them to feel good about themselves Aww. doing something that they, you know, that they enjoy and that they can kind of claim as their own, whether that means playing on stage or for their aunt Frida, whatever it is, <laughs> yeah. that's important. And these pro piano skills that I think have been neglected by a lot of traditional pedagogy yeah. will bring this all together so that they can have a more complete of uh, well-rounded musicianship. Yes. I, I love everything that you said carol everything <laughs> i honestly do because yeah. it's what's interesting you talked about the guitar and and even about the bass and um mm -hmm. i too was you know one of those popular kids in school not because of my personality right. but because <laughs> i played the piano right. and i and i played the drums and i had a basement that was full of musical instruments and so that's where everybody would come and party jam. house it was the <laughs> And, and, you know, you talk about your, your name as, as being, you know, involved in music theory. Well, I'm known as the music theory party queen because I was always about same thing. Here's your music, here's your music, just read. 
But one of the things that's so interesting that you just said was learning licks. And yeah. Lenny Bro, who is um, actually my husband's brother-in-law, he's passed away, but he's he was known as like the world's greatest jazz musician. And he would take the intricacies of piano and put them into his guitar, flamenco style and everything. And if you're not familiar with Lenny Bro, definitely Google him because he's a jazz giant. And one of the things that my daughter Sherry used to do, ironically enough, is that Lenny would listen to piano music and then turn it into licks on the guitar, where she would listen to Lenny play guitar, and then she would turn them into piano licks. But um. the key was that when you listen to musicians, you can almost listen and say, oh, I know who's playing guitar, because <laughs> they have collected those licks and yes. you're right, they, 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 they don't always play them in the same way, but they've right. mastered a few of them. And you can say, oh, I know, I know that's Lenny Bro. Nobody can. Right. Play it's so, like, it's like a voc it's, it's like learning a new language and you're building yes. a vocabulary. Yes. So whatever you're listening to, like when I play guitar, I, I have always drawn on Eric Clapton, Freddie King, uh, T-Bone Walker. So it's like, you can kind of somebody who knows guitar really well, if they heard me soloing, they'd be like, oh yeah, that's kind of, I can hear the Clapton in there or whatever yeah. it is. And you'll yeah. start to form your own style and yeah. you know, your students can do the same as, as well. They'll start to come up with their own riffs and that's important. And even if if they don't sound great or they're, they, they're using a note that's not, who cares? You know, it's more about freedom of expression and allowing them to tap into that without feeling like they're on the spot, which is why I really like um, having kids practice improv yes. with you know headphones in the keyboard. If you've got a lab, it's really great for that. If you can yeah. have them in a keyboard lab, put on the headphones and nobody can hear what they're doing. So they could just pound on the yeah. piano. I've had some kids, I'm like, here, play this with your fist. I just yeah. want you to play some rhythms, you know, whatever it is that just opens them up and makes them not feel like they, they're like this and they don't want to miss a note. That's yeah. really what we're aiming for. Yeah, I think just that exploration and you're right about the headset, you know, kind of like, well, no one can hear me anyway. So right. that's kind of a, a, a kind of a way to get around it. And and also, I think just having students collaborate sometimes have oh, yeah. you know one doing, uh, you know, doing the chords in the other one. Like that's really when the, oh, the yeah. skills kind of weave in together. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's interesting just talking about how musicians have that language of, and sometimes it's just a nod, right? If you and I were jamming together and I would right. just, just give you the look and you'd go, oh, I'm gonna take the solo. Yeah, you know, right. like it, it's kind of like past the hat, like musicians have right. that language. And I think it's really important as piano teachers that, that we give our students that palette to go, okay, there's more than just learning to play all by yourself. It's learning to collaborate and all that creativity. Right, right. And, you know, when I grew up, um, I was blessed to be in a musical family. My dad was a multi-instrumentalist. He played the organ, the piano, the guitar, the trumpet, the stand-up bass, like all of that. So it was not an option in our family. Like you played an instrument. It was like brushing your teeth. It was like, yeah. you no, know, you're doing this. So I see too that, you know, when, when sometimes parents say, oh, I'm going to enroll my children in, in piano lessons, maybe just to see if they like it. Well, for me, if you're coming here, no, it's it's a lifestyle. Like you're going to yeah. have friends and you're going to collaborate. And, you know, when I when I see two music teachers, I think, and this is an important thing, and I know you'll recognize this, Carol, is that you don't know whether that little six-year-old that you're teaching and you're helping them learn how to, you know, read music theory so that they can read lead sheets and they can open that. That might be the next, you know, Ringo star George Harris. Right. Yeah. Because our students are those musicians that are going to make a difference. Um, you know, yeah. Lonnie Anderson, I remember him, uh, sorry, uh, Lonnie Eagleton. I remember he came to one of my um, uh, ultimate music theory workshop presentations. And I'm like, my God, like you're a rock star. Like, <laughs> why are you at my workshop? And he said to learn. And I went, you know, if you are open to learning and I'm, and I call it being coachable, if you're coachable, oh my gosh, you are just going to have the best time learning all this stuff. Like I seriously, 
I, I just want to put a challenge out there to all of the people that are on the on you know viewing and you might be viewing later if you're watching the replay go ahead and put skills and we will still send you that link so make sure that you're getting this because it's a wealth of information and one of the things I think we should really challenge ourselves um, and I'll just put the challenge out there is that I'm thinking now about my own class and I don't have a lot of students because of course I'm teaching three days a week now but how can I incorporate this and almost make it something that they could do for the recital at the end of the year so that they can say this is the lead sheet and this is me this is my um, right. little improv so maybe that will be a challenge that you want to do not you carol but i'm just talking about you know our viewers yes. or maybe you as well that we challenge our students to play their piece that they want to but then let's also have a little jam at the end where they yeah to do a recital something. jam session. A recital <laughs> jam session. Have to, I might have to get out the guitar and learn my, my little one, four, five chords. Yeah, yeah. My family, my family kind of has a good laugh about that. But yeah. um, so just wrapping up today, Carol, what would be sort of the uh, the uh, one word of advice that you can give, you know, our musician friends and music educators uh, here today? Just what would be the one starting point that you would say this is this is just one action step that you could do today. Listen to music, listen to different types of music. Everything that comes out of me, I think, has been in terms of composition, in terms of improvisation, like I referred you know, to Eric Clapton or whatever. Listen critically. And that is the first step to everything. I listen to a ton of really crappy pop music because my kids like it, OK? Yeah. So yeah. I'll listen to it. But I'll yeah. find the good, find what's in there that you can use to connect with students on their own level. So obviously there are gonna be things that they can't play, some kinds of hip hop thing doesn't translate to piano. Although I did arrange Led Zeppelin for piano, my best, <laughs> my, my, my most favorite uh, composition, you probably, I don't know if you can see, there's a, Led Zeppelin uh, mothership poster here. And yeah. that, that was done because I did the easy piano music. But that's what I'm saying. If your kids like rock, if they like pop, yeah. listen to whatever it is that's happening today and yeah. keep an open mind and say, what can I grab from there that they're going to relate to so you can move that into their piano lesson and use that as a little bit of motivation. Yeah, that's great advice. I think as as teachers, busy teachers that have a full teaching studio and, you know, children that are that are still at home, uh, sometimes we're just, OK, I go teach. I do the same thing, same thing, same thing, go back. And we don't take that professional development time for ourselves to listen right. to music. And maybe it should even be part of the lesson. Like, what are you listening to? Let's let's learn it. Let's both yeah. listen together. What do you hear? So that if you don't have that, well, when am I going to do that? Well, I don't know. Maybe when you're, you know, cleaning the house or doing the dishes or not. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's really great advice, Carol. I'm going to make sure to do some more listening, and I can't yeah. wait to download and print off the uh, the lead sheet gift. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. It's very kind of you. Um, we've also got in the show notes are uh, the link to um, Carol's website, which is Interactive Piano Method. And no, this, it, it's uh, Carol, carolmatspiano.com. Sorry. Oh, it, oh, thank you for yeah. doing that. Yeah, I yeah sorry. If, you go to, if you go to carolmatspiano.com, you can okay. sign up for all my free monthly pieces. Wow. And just, uh, you know, there are about 20 different pieces on the archives. You can download them and print them and wow. use them for all your students for free. I like wow. to just kind of provide a little bit of, you know, fun stuff for the teachers. Yeah. And also, if you've not gotten a free level of the interactive piano method yet, feel free to contact me. My contact information is on the website. I'll get you a free level. If you want levels three or four that have the pro piano skills in it, let me know if you haven't gotten a free level yet and I'll, I'll get that to you. Oh, wow. That's very, very generous of you. Very generous, Carol. I know how much work it is to prepare <laughs> all of those tools. And uh, that's very kind of you. So thank you from all of us 
for Thank not only you. your time today, but creating this amazing opportunity. I'm glad you got off the stage for a minute just so that you could <laughs> write all of these books and create this fantastic program. Uh, so thank you again for joining thank me today. Uh, hopefully you're going to love, like, share, comment, and, uh, and make sure you check out uh, Carol's website because she's got fantastic things for you there. So uh, keep listening, keep smiling, and uh, party like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.